All right, we are officially live on Facebook um, here for our Mortgage Monday. This is actually our second uh, Mortgage Monday in our series. So today we are here with Jeremy Jordan with Atlantic Bay Mortgage. Um, thank you so much for joining us via Zoom. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, we're... Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Hope everybody had an awesome weekend. And... Yes. Yeah, happy Mother's Day, everybody. Um, it was a beautiful day. I don't know if you and Rosanna got outside, but it was unbelievable. We did. We did. Had a chance to get a nice walk in and enjoyed some uh, some company together. So. Yeah. Did you get to see your mom or were you guys social distancing? We did a little bit of uh, um, interaction uh, in the morning. I took the kids over there and just kind of did this whole social distancing thing from a distance. So yeah. I think we all got to continue to be cognizant of that situation. Yeah, it's so hard. So my grandma has been super cautious. I mean, she's in her mid 80s. So, you know, she's pretty much in her apartment. You know, my mom goes grocery shopping for her. My grandma pulls up opens her trunk of her car, my mom puts all the groceries in, and my grandma drives off. Like, that's how she has been super strict. So we ended up going over there to her apartment complex to kind of have like a little cafe outside. Love it. And she made us like some strawberry, um, kind of like a strawberry dessert for breakfast, which was kind of cool because she's all about breakfast um, dessert, so or dessert for breakfast, I should say. But so that was really cool. We got to spend about an hour or so out there just hanging out with her. And it was nice because when we looked at the weather, like maybe Tuesday, it would look like it was going to be like in the low 40s, 30s, cool. maybe. Yeah. And we were like, man, we're going to be outside. This is going to be horrible. Yeah. But it ended up being so beautiful. That's so great. super grateful for that. Um, but yeah, so happy Mother's Day, everybody. Um, today is now a new start to a new week. And, um, you know, we're nearing, hopefully, nearing the end of all of this. I think the governor's order says on Friday that we start the reopening process. Um, although I did see that he had a press conference today, so I'm hoping nothing changed that I have not caught up on. Um, right. But, you know, obviously the world has changed in the last nine or 10 weeks. Um, so much has gone on. What can you tell, I guess, the people watching about your world, the mortgage industry, and what has changed for you on a daily basis? Well, I know for me personally, I mean, I'm, I like to typically be a very hands-on loan officer in a sense that I like to have so many of my appointments face-to-face -face and in person. Mm -hmm. um, and I know for me personally, the thing that I'm struggling the most with is not is kind of feeling like I'm not forming that relationship that I like to build with a lot of my clients and have them come into my office and sit down and do a an initial buyer consultation and yeah. being with them at that application part of the process and then actively attending their closings and dropping off their closing gifts and unfortunately that's all been impacted because I haven't had a client in my office now for eight weeks now yeah. so yeah um, our office is completely closed to the public so correct um, everybody is pretty instructed to work from home um, until next week and then we're all back in the office which I'm kind of excited about I mean there's nothing sure. like kind of team camaraderie and everybody like on the same page at the same time and um, so yeah client interaction though is all electronic it's big much. But I think we're getting acclimated more to the Teams calls or the Zoom or the those different types of platforms, and that's where a lot of the you know business has been going as to you know for folks that really want to get some of that face-to-face -face connection. It's you know they're sitting in their living room, and you know I'm sitting at my house, my home office, or occasionally I've been swinging into our Yorktown-based office mm -hmm. um, in the conference room where I you know sit most days by myself in here, yeah. um, which is where I am today. But um, so we're we're adapting, um, and I think. I think the general consensus is that we'll see some changes uh, moving forward, yeah. um, but I'll, I'm looking forward to the days of being able to get back to you know how I like doing business the most, which is you know face to face. So. Yeah. Well, the worst part is is that we can't even attend closings right now. I know. Which is like just mind blowing to me. You go through this entire process with these people, you know, sometimes <clears throat> the highest of highs and the lowest of lows that some people will ever go through. And then right. you don't even get to hand them the keys at closing. It's like heart-wrenching. Right. So, you right. know, I've said a couple times, like, we've done some Zooms during closings. But I'm like, it's not the same. Like, I don't get to see and feel the excitement. And I'm I'm really looking forward to getting back to that at least. Um, right. So... But yeah, the yeah, bad thing is some of these, uh, some of my clients will say that they'll, they'll get to know my phone number more familiar than their spouses over the course of the yeah. next you know, 45 days because, you know, we're staying in 
you know, direct uh, communication and updates along the process. And, yep. you know, they're calling to check, you know, hey, do you need anything else? And I'm calling to request documents. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So. That's so, so that's cool. Fun. So is your, um, is, speaking of process, um, is you have a, a processor and somebody in your office with you on the normal situation and they're all working from home now? Um, so my processor is, so Virginia, uh, Virginia Beach is, is, is home to Atlantic Bay corporate headquarters. Okay. So we're very, um, it's very nice to have, you know, our corporate ops, which is our headquarters, you know, it's a 35 minute drive, you know, mm -hmm. across 64. Right. Um, so my processor, you know, is typically from Norfolk. She's been working remotely, um, you know, every day. Um, but the ability to kind of have everyone connected through, you know, we, we use a platform called Teams. Okay. Um, so we've been able to stay in direct communication there and is do Is that Microsoft more Teams? Chat. It is. It yeah. is. Okay. Um, yeah, we've actually sure. been, um, I've been playing with that a little bit in OneNote and stuff, trying to see if that, we use Evernote, um, sure. yeah. which is kind of something we've always used on our team for about 10 years now, And um, but it doesn't have a lot of the capabilities like the Zooms and stuff, so we're using multi-platforms, and I've heard right. a lot of good things about Teams. Yeah, so we, we our, our company's kind of shifted toward Teams. The best part is we can kind of do our video chats on there, we can do um, IMs and mm -hmm. just stay in direct you know, contact with one another. So for us as a company, we've had to evolve a little bit, but our systems and processes have kind of held true. We've we've stayed, you know, even throughout the height of the the little mini refinance boom that we had in February, early March. You know, our company's um, motto has always been to prioritize our purchase business. Right. You know, we, we we prioritize purchases at Atlantic Bay, and even as busy as things were, we were staying <clears throat> staying true to a 48 hour turn time yeah. and still closing loans in 30 days. You know, when most companies had gone to 60 or 90 days or more, or weren't even accepting applications at one point along the way. So our purchase business, we we know that that's the lifeline uh, mm -hmm. of a good mortgage company. Um, so our CEO Brian Holland, um, who's you know who's been the owner of Atlantic Bay for 23 years now, um, that is our focus, and that's kind of our our you know something that we really hold true um, you know for for us as a as a correspondent lender here in Hampton Roads. Yeah, that's awesome. And speaking of just um, Atlantic Bay and the magnitude that you guys have, you guys are one of the largest lenders in the area, and you know we were just speaking before we went live about all the multiple offers that we're seeing, which is you know, because the interest rates are so low, because there are buyers in the market and there is not a lot of inventory, we are seeing multiple offers time and time again, especially in the houses that are priced right, in good condition and a good location. You know, we had three listings go on the market last week and two of them had seven offers on them. Wow. So, wow. you know, and then the third had multiple offers. So just <laughs> right. a few, but I'm like, just a few, that sounds awful to say that. We had yeah. a few offers, you know. That's right. But it's really important, and I think that buyers um, don't quite understand how important it is to get pre-qualified, not only pre-qualified, but taking the next step and getting pre-approved, and also making sure they pick a good, reputable lender. Right. Because that right. listing agent is looking at that pre-qualification letter very specifically when they have seven offers. And that yeah, may are. make the difference between them getting it and not getting it you know, taking out all, you know, price and closing costs aside, the lender may be the difference, you know, sure. can you, can no. you speak to that? I agree, Shannon. And we're seeing that especially becoming more and more evident, as you mentioned, when inventory here in Hampton Roads has, has kind of shrunk. And there's a lot of buyers that are pinned up. They're looking, they're actively looking. Mm -hmm. um, I have a number of, of folks in my pipeline that are doing that exact same thing. The fortunate part about it is we've, we've, we've got a process called a TBD approval process, which is really quite valuable for us and for our clients because that process allows you know myself as a lender or mortgage banker to pull a copy of their credit report and get their credit authorization and then we'll actually reach out to the to the client and ask them to go ahead and start the process of, of uploading documents to us mm -hmm. so that we can have pay stubs bank statements tax returns w-2s that we can verify income and and assets and everything up front um, and then we actually you know have them fill out a um, like a TBD loan application it's non-binding non-committal which means that the client at any point in time if they want to go a different direction um, they're not held or obligated to cover any expense on that part mm -hmm. um, but we we prioritize those and we get those into underwriting and we have them underwritten up front and that brings a lot of value you know especially if you're a listing agent in a multiple offer situation 
Like if I can call the listing agent and say, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Jones um, have, have already formally uh, applied with Atlantic Bay, and this is not just a pre-qualification. This is a this is an approved buyer that's been through the full underwriting process. That right. we're we're going to wait on, you know, uh, the appraisal and title work. But you've got a, a really good, strong, solid buyer who's who's, you know, who's had their you know eyes dotted and T's crossed to right. to ensure accuracy. So um, now, granted, there are some levels uh, throughout the process that even after that's done. Like if someone's been recently furloughed or let go from you know their employment, that could hinder yeah. or have a, an adverse effect. What uh, are you guys the- doing is on the Atlantic Bay side to check that? I know that some lenders have said, you know, look, we're doing a verification of employment the day of closing. Is that right. kind of what the same thing that you all are doing? We are doing that in, in most instances. It just depends on the type of loan, though. Ultimately, mm-hmm. like VHDA files. So we're the number one lender through for the Virginia Housing Development Authority. It's a bond program, um, more readily designed for first-time buyers. But that VHDA program is is designed to have you know same day you know um, employment verification. Mm-hmm. So in all likelihood, we're we're telling folks like you can't have a nine or ten o'clock closing when we're having to re-verify your employment right. that same day. Right. So we're moving those until the afternoon. Uh, I know my 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 team and I were sending emails out to those VHDA buyers in advance um, to get direct points of contact because we do understand that there are some instances that we you know if if we go calling to verify employment and HR directors working from home they yeah. might not get the voicemail or may not have their phone forwarded to them so we're actually telling our clients hey go ahead and reach out to a supervisor somebody that you know if we call them to verify your employment is able to answer the phone and get sure. us. So answers there. So I think in large part, you know, dealing with a with a with a lender who's kind of aware of all the challenges with getting loans, you know, closed during this pandemic, so that delays don't happen. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's really kind of paramount. Mm-hmm. Um, unfortunately, there's some things with the pandemic that we're unable to control fully. Um, you know, we we I've had instances where some folks have been, you know, have had a decrease in hours overall, and we have to go back with underwriting and. It might have been, you know, we might have qualified them on a 40 hour a week schedule and now, you know, they might have had their hours cut in half or, you know, only working 30 hours or, you know, vice versa. So we're having to get creative in some of those instances, you know, but I I think, I think it's just even more paramount during a pandemic to to deal local, you know, whether that be Atlantic Bay or or, or someone else, but just to deal somebody that, you know, kind of understands this local market right now. Right, because the reality is, you know, as I know that there are a lot of people struggling right now who are working in the salon industry, the restaurant industry, our sure. area is actually doing a lot better off than some of the other areas in the United States as far as unemployment rate and things like Absolutely. that. So um, nationally, you know, um, if the, let's just say, Quicken Loans is sure. taking their precautions for a national level, it may be right. a lot different than the precautions that you're taking for a local level. That's right. I think we at dealing local, you get a better sense of fully understanding the local market and what that market means. Right. Um, and like I said, being situational on the south side and having you know Atlantic Bay being recognized as the number one lender in Hampton Roads for the past two years in a row, that brings kind of instant credibility. Um, we've got a great local presence here in, in, in our market. You know, where I mean, majority of clients or, or, or agents are certainly familiar with Atlantic Bay sure. and have seen us in and around the area. And we've got some great loan officers um, as part of our local team. You do, you know, yep. Both on the peninsula and on the south side. So um, I've been with the company now for almost 12 years. It'll be 12 years next month. Yeah. Um, and I've been in the mortgage business for about 13. So okay. really almost for my whole, you know, whole professional career, yeah. I've been here with Atlantic Bay. So. so did you start mortgages right out of college? I did right out of college. Yeah, I, I graduated from Randolph-Macon College and figured that I wanted to get into college coaching, actually. Yeah. I, I now coach at the high school level. Right, right. School, but, and I love doing that. Love my guys there, my family there. But, um, you know, predominantly went to Randolph-Macon not only to get an education, but it was kind of a pipeline for the collegiate coaching ranks yeah. and um, decided that, um, you know, I was going to take a year off uh, from from. Um, getting my bachelor's at Randolph-Macon and and go get my master's in an accounting uh, program 
uh, from William and Mary or, or something of the equivalent. Yep. And uh, as one would have it, um, needed to find a job because I was getting ready to fall off my parents' insurance yeah. <laughs> um, that December and stumbled into the mortgage business. And little did I know that this would be the career that I've you know, enjoyed for the last 13 years. And um, it's a tough, challenging career. Yeah. Um, not every day's roses, but there's sure. a lot of there's a lot of, of really good things, and, and I thoroughly enjoy what I do, and just the ability to, to help a first-time home buyer, you know, get them from point A to point B um, at, at all different ages um, right. of life. It's not just it's not somebody in your 20s you right. know, or early 30s. Oh, yeah. Yep. I mean, it could be, you know, I've had clients that have rented, you know, homes or apartments for 20 plus years that you know in their 50s you know buy their first house and that's yeah. just such a rewarding experience to kind of play a small role absolutely that, you know? i never realized we had that in common i guess because i this is my only career so that's right. i was at cnu majored in sociology which right you know what are you gonna do with that except for go to grad school or you know and right. so i just with student loans and i, I just maxed out on what i could capacity wise do school wise sure. I was like four years is good right now I'll go back to school let me just do this real estate gig you know right. until I can make some money pay some loans off and then go back right. 15 years later I'm still here <laughs> you've certainly found your calling and that's yeah why it's just funny it's funny how you know growing up people don't really talk about like you could be a loan officer for you know right. a career or you could be a real estate agent you know all the sure. jobs are you know doctor nurse um, firefighter teacher you know things like that engineer nobody ever right. says like hey have you thought about the real estate world so yeah well, fortunately one of my clients um, is a uh, kind of an adjunct professor at Christopher Newport and um, every semester um, I wasn't able to do it this past semester obviously yeah um, I typically go and and help um, you know teach a a one day class, nice. um, hour hour and a half just on hey building your credit where to start you know who has a credit card who knows their credit score right you know let's talk about your student loans you know let's let's talk about the impact of ensuring that you you know come out and understand when the payments are are coming due what options do you have with your student loans you know what does deferment mean for the student loans and just kind of educate them on more life experiences surrounding that's so cool that specific topic so that's always a, a joy of mine and going back and um but it also is you know, because you're thinking about you're 21, 22, 23 years old, getting ready to graduate from college. The amount of of, of students or young, you know, young professionals uh, that are about to tackle the workforce that that don't have a credit card, that don't have a credit score, that never been educated on the process and what it entails. So, um, it gives them some some really valuable information, you know, to kind of go and tackle, you know, and take the next steps. Yeah, that's um, so funny because um, Sean and I have. He's going to laugh when he sees this. But we have an ongoing battle between the two of us of who has the better <laughs> credit score. I love it. And I can never beat him, Jeremy, because oh my gosh. his parents got him a credit card when he was like 14 years old. So his That's credit right. history is so much longer than mine. And I tell him all the time, I'm like, we started on uneven ground. Like, That's this right. is not fair. If I got a credit card when I was 14, we I'd be killing you, you know. But That's we're pretty right. close right now. So I feel like I've kind of made up some, made up some room. But um, it's a big – people don't realize how important that is. Right. So, and anybody out there that has a college student, you know, that might be, you know, someone in college or a young, a young professional that might be coming out of high school and just working, you know, more of a trade or uh, a job of that equivalent. It, it's great to get them added, you know, on one of your credit cards as like an authorized user or help start and establish their own credit card. Right. You know, and just, and just teach them the value of ensuring that this bill gets paid on time. Right. You know, it's, I see so many folks that have um, that start. And get credit cards at a young age that make you know kind of poor mistakes and you know digs themselves a massive hole. Right. You know they're out with credit scores at five sixty, five eighty, yeah. collection debt. You know from a three hundred dollar, you know Discover card or something yeah. like. That. So, yeah. um, you know, it teaches them the value of understanding how, how bills are to be paid, and you know you can't you can't assume you know because the the credit card companies. You know, when that payment's due on the first, you get a little bit of a grace period. But if you're if you're 30 days past due, they are hitting you with a 30 day late. Yeah. And good luck trying to get it removed right. at that point. Yeah, that's a good point. Teaching the responsibility, but also trying to build the credit. And that's I think right. that's a lot of times people just don't. They're too much in the mindset of like no debt, no debt, no debt. But that's not necessarily sure. debt as long as you're paying it off and you're staying on top of it and building that right. credit for the long term is important. 
Yeah. Yeah, and you don't have to have a $5,000 credit card limit either. I right. Mean, the reality is you can have a $300 limit or $500 limit. And, um, you know, it's, uh, you know, compounding interest and in the, the way that that interest um, kind of accrues, you know, if you don't make that payment, you know, monthly. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, a good, it's a good life lesson to, to have a credit card at a young age and you get accustomed to making that payment every month. Yeah. Any other advice you would give to people on how to build their credit? And I know you guys have an awesome um, – credit program that you can run people through and and can you tell them a little bit about that? Sure, Sure. it's through a company, uh, through our credit, uh, who we pull credit from, we have the ability to actually take a borrower, let's just say a borrower has a 570 credit score, you know, and they've, they want to buy but yet they don't have any direction on kind of where to go, Um, depending on how many trade lines that they have and things of that nature, we can actually run a uh, kind of a what if simulator and we can actually give them a detailed one or two page report that tells them, hey, if you pay this credit card down to X number of dollars, you know, your score, you know, there's there's a 92% probability that we can increase your credit score to this level. Um, so the so biggest cool. thing with credit is so many people make mistakes because they assume one thing. And again, I tell folks all the time, what we assume with when it comes to credit and what, what the credit bureaus are actually looking for might be totally different than what you assume. Right. Like, you know, paying off a collection may be a deterrent, you know, and, and actually lower your score. Um, or thinking that you should pay a credit card balance to zero, you know. Um, I just had that actually yesterday um, with that client that was looking, you know, over the weekend and um, gave them some advice on how to bump their credit score up just to get that next tier for pricing. Right. And they said, well, gosh, we're just going to pay it down to zero. I said, no, 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 no. The- yeah. You know, pay it down to this balance because under that it says if you do pay it down to zero, it could actually have an adverse effect. So, um, and that's like an algorithm. You literally punch in everything that they have, and it comes back with like specific outline of what you have to right. do. It's really nice. I mean, we we send them that report and just say, look, if you do want to improve your credit, it takes X number of dollars to be able to do that, and then just follow these steps. And uh, you know, and again, it gives it a percentage. It's not it's not a hundred percent effective all the time. You know, we we try to set that expectation that we can't guarantee it, but based on this number of percentage, if you do that without anything else changing in your credit report, then you know the likelihood that is in three to five business days we can flip your score and we can use that higher credit score. So it helps folks that might have got turned down at other institutions, you know, apply. Um, and one of the things that I've been really pleased with from an Atlantic Bay perspective through this pandemic is that so many lenders locally, nationally have had significant um, increases to borrowers' credit or credit scores. Right, um, right. I did hear that. We, we are just we're, we're the. I'm not a. I'm not aware of any other companies that have held true to what their original scores were going into the pandemic. But we've actually stayed, you know, as low as like a 580, you know, with 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 our VA, uh, with our government-backed borrowers. Yeah. You know, and granted, there may be some additional documentation, or they might have to. You know, we might look at a four four month bank statement to show that they've you know got got the ability to save, or there's some things that underwriting might ask for that's kind of over and above normally what we ask for. But I've been very pleased that our CEO and our, our leadership team has has heard the feedback from us in the sales side of things. And you know, again, from our company's perspective, it's all about you know making sure that we underwrite and um, do good loans. And again, it's about borrowers repaying the debt, obviously. Right. Right. Um, but uh, we, we've held we've held to that same you know credit score guideline. We haven't made a uh, a knee jerk reaction. You know when everyone around us is changing. Yeah. Uh, and I've been really pleased with that. You know. Um, That's really cool. I know we were talking a little bit before this too about um, just the nature of the market right now, and there's this underlying kind of fear in people that they don't want to put their house on the market because they don't know if there's going to be something to buy. Right. And so, you know, we talked about the different types of financing that can really <laughs> help that situation, um, specifically a program that you guys have that is a first and a second mortgage. Correct. Can you talk a little yeah. bit about that? I'd love to. Yeah. So we're seeing this program kind of take um, more shape here, you know, within the last couple of weeks. And it's a program basically, you know, back in the old days, when I say the old days, <laughs> old days in a sense, like 2008, 2009. Um, but, uh, it, it's you know it's basically called like an eighty twenty. So the way it would work is 
you know, just to kind of make round numbers at the end of the day, is that if you took a four hundred thousand dollar purchase price, for example, and you know, normally, um, if you you know. We're planning on, let's say, putting down 20%, and that was tied up in your house that you're in the process of, of selling or getting ready to sell, right? But the home of your dreams comes available, and for whatever reason, that you know, um, the listing side won't accept the home sale contingency. Right, because when there's multiple offers, the home sale contingencies, I mean, those are getting kicked out. That's right. You know? That's right. And I, you know, it, being in the seller's shoes, if you need to sell, I, I can certainly understand the seller's perspective of not accepting that home sale contingency, especially if it's a newer property to the market, you know, there's a lot of activity. Um, but basically, you could do, for example, like a $320,000 first mortgage, and then you'd actually get up to like an $80,000 second mortgage. And people are like, well, gosh, that's too good to be true, like 100% financing on those? So, so, but, but, but yeah, yeah, I mean, we do have an investor, investor that will enable us to do that in the form of a second, second mortgage. Um, so, so it's, it's called a combo, basically. basically. Mm -hmm. So you have an 80% first mortgage and then, you know, up to a 20% second mortgage. You do pay a little bit of a premium in the overall rate because it's all based on the combined loan to value. Um, but the rates on those seconds are super competitive. You know, if there's a situation of a client out there that kind of fits that bill, you know, have them reach out to me. I'd love to, you know, run some numbers for them just to kind of give them some tools to make an informed decision. Yeah, because then um, it, once they sell their other house, they can pay off that second. That's and right. Then and then they're, they're stuck with the lower payment, you know, which on the first mortgage, right, right. without a refinance, without doing a home equity line of credit or anything like that. Right. It's all in one package deal. Correct. Yeah, it's, it's a really nice, nice program, program out there, there. It's really um, and it's and it's great. It, you know, it's great for um, for that that type of uh, you know seller that's looking to buy or maybe move up. Right. Um, and uh, you know, people it gives don't them want to sell. There's a lot of people who love their house, you know, <laughs> but they're ready for something bigger or they want a different location or something, and they're scared to give up that house if the yes. next one isn't going to be found right away. And so it's just a weird situation, but. At the same time, our inventory issue isn't going to be helped unless those people put their houses on the market. So it's kind right. of like a catch-22. And, and it's one thing for you know two adults to try to tackle that. You know, it's another thing when you have children involved, and yep. you know that whole dynamic just adds another. You know, uh, yeah. makes it that much more difficult. Yeah, but, um, absolutely. So but what yeah, other, it's, um, it's, you know, we've, good yeah, we've talked a little bit about how things have changed and kind of what Atlantic Bay you know, has to offer in our local market, what sure. else would you say to someone who is interested in getting pre-qualified right now and, you know, doesn't really know where to start or kind of about the process? Well, well I think the, the biggest, biggest thing with the process, process is just trying to get educated on it because some folks don't know where to start. Some folks might be hesitant because their credit score may be a little, a little bit lower. Some folks might have been told miss that, you know, you need 10% or 20% down up front and they're not aware of, you know, some of the dynamic, you know, first time home buyer programs that are available. Um, there's misconceptions that, you know, like if I have one VA, I can't use another VA mortgage, you know. Um, so there's just so many myths out there affecting, you know, that are around the mortgage industry as a whole. Um, so in every case is a little bit different, right? It's, you know, every client's a little bit different you know, what their objective is. You know, our, our goal or my goal would be to just kind of give them advice and just kind of educate them on what it takes to get to, you know, their next their next step of the process. Um, and I think people don't realize that that can happen in a simple conversation on the phone. It doesn't have to be an hour-long meeting. It doesn't really, you know, have to be very complicated. It can just be a consult on the phone. That's right. And again, whether it's preparing them for 30 days or six months from now, it's just – it's, it's just a process of just kind of gathering information and just kind of seeing what's out there. You know, I, I, you know, the program that we mentioned a little bit earlier. I mean, I, I would say that the general consensus is that you know folks aren't aware of the you know the eighty twenty program where there's opportunities you know to to get in with potentially. I mean, honestly, like I didn't even when he was when you were just telling me about that before the call. I was like, man, I had no idea that that was readily available and not for somebody who you know is a first time home buyer getting 100% financing through VHDA, but a normal conventional financing yeah. option at 100% is huge. Yeah, and again, just like anything else, there's minimum credit sure. scores and you know debt ratios and stuff that have to come into play. But um, it's just something that we can kind of analyze, you know, for them and um, you know just help provide them some guidance. And and maybe they, you know, it opens up. Well, gosh, maybe I can make this decision to kind of move 
on something, something that I've had my eye on or knew might, might be coming in the near future, near future. Yeah. because this affords me the ability to do that without, you know, without as much risk yes. as, hey, I'm going to list my house and not know where I'll end up next, right. you know, type mentality. So, yeah. um, so, so it's, it's good. 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 Well, thank you so much. Um, you know, hopefully our viewers got something out of all of our conversations today. And um, I think the main conversation point is just that reach out because yeah. – we have the tools to help anybody through the process um, Absolutely. and whether or not people think, you know, you, sometimes people come to me and they're like, Oh, my credit is so bad. And I'm like, well, what's bad? And they're like, it's like a six fifty, or, you know, and I'm like, okay, that's not bad. You know, the no, perception no. is right. different. So just reach out um, to Jeremy or to I, and you know, we can walk you through the process very easily and, and sure. get you into your next home. Um, thank you, Jeremy, for all of your time today. We Thanks appreciate you very much. We appreciate you taking care, such good care of our clients sure. um, throughout the years. So, all right. We'll talk later. Yes. yes. Take care. Bye. All right. I just ended it.